The winners of the 2023 Steam Awards have literally got to be a fucking troll. The frickin' Labour of Love, Red Dead Redemption 2, Most Innovative Gameplay, Starfield. <laughs> but before we get to those two titles in particular, let's talk about the other titles, shall we? So Game of the Year, Baldur's Gate 3, this was completely deserved, and I expected Baldur's Gate 3 to win Game of the Year on Steam anyway, because it's won little everywhere else, and it completely deserves it. I mean, if, if Baldur's Gate 3 didn't win, I would be extremely shocked. But some of these other pros are trolls, but we'll talk about them in a minute. VR game of the year, um, I don't play VR personally. I can't use VR, I get motion sickness from VR. I don't have a VR headset, but I used one like years ago. And yeah, yeah, I got motion sickness, so I can't, I can't comment on that. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2, Labour of Love. This has got to be a fucking troll. So let's start with Red Dead 2, oh, um, single player. So the single player hasn't had any DLCs, no extra content, nothing. It's had patches over the years with like um, DLSS and FSR there, like the recent patches that added them in. I don't know if the Intel um, common XCSX is in Red Dead 2. I, I, I don't think it is, but th they're just like patches to add in like resolution scales and stuff like that. So that is, that's not really, that's not really Labour of Love. I mean, technically, I guess Labour of Love could count maybe mods and stuff like that. But the thing is, Red Dead 2 mods, like GTA 5 mods, they don't have a Steam Workshop. So the mods come from third-party websites like Nexus and stuff like that. So... It's not actually by the by Steam themselves, so it doesn't really make sense to me. But obviously, this is for Red Dead Two Online. This has got to be a troll for Red Dead Two Online. So if you don't know, Red Dead Redemption Two Online has not had a update, a DLC update in two years. The last one was um, Blood Money, I think. I've never personally played Red Dead Two Online. I never got into it. But Rockstar completely abandoned Red Dead Redemption Two Online. The community got out outraged and all that type of stuff. This happened. We were like, where is Red Dead 2? What, what's going on, Rockstar? And Rockstar eventually spawned. It's like, oh, we're just slowing down an update. So we're doing these tiny little um, pay missions or something like that. And that's all there was even proper content. And for like the last year, they've been doing monthly um, events. That's like double XP for this particular mode or double money for this particular mode. It's, it's not new content. No new content. So this is obviously a troll. The Rockstar community obviously voted for this. You know, I didn't vote for this originally, but I decided, you know what? I'm going to vote for this myself, <laughs> Labour of Love Red Dead 2, because I just want to have a laugh at Rockstar, and I think it's funny, because the media's going to talk about this, and they'll be like, oh my god, I wonder if Rockstar probably might make a comment on this, because the media's going to talk about this. I think it would be funny. Um, best game on Steam Deck, Hogwarts Legacy. I'm actually glad Hogwarts Legacy actually won a reward somewhere. So if you don't know the actual game of, game of the year rewards that happened, uh, I think it was the 7th of December, Hogwarts Legacy didn't even get a single nomination. We, I think we all know why, because the media's got a big problem with um, J.K. Rowling's opinion on certain people on that. And it's, it's really stupid. Like, game journalists and actual gamers completely disagree, but... The game of the year reward, the actual game of the year rewards are kind of rigged anyway. I mean, the freaking fan base only gets 10% of the vote, while journalists get 90%, even though journalists have terrible takes. I think we can all mostly agree with that. Granted, though, maybe this is why we don't give stuff completely to the fandom, because the fandom are just as trolls as well, but come on, lads. we got to give the fandom more than 10% of the vote, maybe at least 25%, maybe 50% to make the votes more balanced, especially like some of the games that won Game of the Year and that rewards in particular was really bad, like 2020, The Last of Us 2 winning. Um, I, I don't really think any really normal person could agree with that because the game was very controversial. But it makes sense how Log Hogwarts Legacy won this. Um, Hogwarts Legacy, I would imagine, plays great on a Steam Deck. Also, it's probably a great game to just sit, play down, sit down and play. And also, it has great control support as well So for the Steam Deck users. So that makes complete sense. And um, better with friends, Lethal Company. I think this makes sense as well. Um, best game with friends. This game absolutely blew out of nowhere. Absolutely amazing game. Absolutely deserves it. I would say so. Outstanding visuals, Atomic Heart. This is an interesting one. <laughs> this was a kind of another game the media had a problem as well because they saw that it was like propaganda, Russian propaganda and stuff like that. I'm like, oh my god, guys, it's a fucking game. But the graphics on Atomic Heart actually did look really, really, really good. When I seen it, when I came out, I was like, wow, I was actually quite impressed. So, if some people probably say this is a bit of a troll, like other games could have won it. But, I mean, I can understand why Atomic Art won it personally. I would for this game personally, because I didn't really play the other games. So, it's probably the most popular game in that category. So, 
Probably that's how it won. Um, most integrated gameplay, Starfield. Now, this is funny. I'm trying to think of a feature that Starfield introduced that was in no other game ever. I'm really, really, really struggling to figure, think of one. Like, shipbuilding, that's been in other games. Space, travel in the world, No Man's Sky, you got No Man's Sky for that. You have to, there's loading screens constantly. I mean, maybe it's the integrated game for that. Oh, that's what Starfield integrated, guys. Having constant loading screens, having constant, having the fast travel. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, that's maybe what it won on. I wish you could view the actual Steam page, but I don't want to click on it because it'll just take me to the Steam page. But <laughs> regardless, I played Starfield the first week it came out and I have not played it since. <laughs> I can't believe the game I haven't played it since. But it's so funny, it won. The reason I think this could win it, because I'm going to show you at the end what the nominations were when we go to the Learn More category. But Starfield even removed mechanics from Fallout 4. And Fallout 4 wasn't really a great RPG either. <laughs> so, <laughs> fuck knows why that won. That, that is so funny. That is such a troll. That is clearly a complete troll. But I think I know why Starfield won that. I'm actually genuinely serious. Because the other games in this category... Don't really make, uh, not really games, I don't think most people have heard of. Um, best game you suck at Seafew, that makes complete sense. I mean, Lords of the Fallen wasn't it, but Lords of the Fallen was a broken buggy mess. Um, so, yeah, that makes sense. I've never actually played that game personally. I need to play Seafew, I need to buy it one day and try it myself. It's a great game. Uh, best soundtrack, The Last of Us. Let's be honest, can we get a year where The Last of Us does not win a fucking reward? I mean, The Last of Us won's a good, great game. But it's not, like, the best game ever. Can we just get a year, like... Me, personally, Hi-Fi Rush was the other option. I didn't play it. I've not played Rast the Last of Us on PC because it was a fucking awful port, but Hi-Fi Rush probably should have won best soundtrack because Last of Us... The Last of Us is, geez, like, like, 2013, 2014, last year on the PlayStation 5. I don't look at all the rewards, but it's probably got nominated so many times. It's won, it won so many rewards. Can we have a year where The Last of Us doesn't win a award? And this is also a troll because I get it has best... I get it's people are waiting off the soundtrack, but the PC port was fucking awful. So <laughs> I don't know how legitimate that is. Um, also, 33 quid for a fucking game that came out in 2013. £50, that's a fucking joke. But anyway, um, Baldur's Gate 3, outstanding story, Rich. Yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 has an amazing story. You get so many decisions, so many options, so that makes sense. Best sit back and relax, Dave the Diver. Yeah, I respect it, to be honest. I think if, um, what was it, City Skylines 2? If City Skylines 2 wasn't such a controversial game and wasn't an absolute awful fucking port and wasn't rushed, I think that might have won it. But I don't know, because the strategy game market... Strategy games they really need to get their own category, because less people play strategy games compared to other games. They really need to go. But before we end this, let's look at the Learn More section, because this shows all the games. Right, so this shows all the games, so... It makes sense about the Skate 3 won this. I'm kind of actually surprised Hogwarts Legacy got elected, for, got a um, void for this lethal company as well. Uh, VR Game of the Year. I, I I didn't really know about VR Game of the Year. I just wanted this, even though this game's probably not good, because I, I don't know. I don't play VR personally, so that's probably a bit of troll for me. Labor of Love. Originally, I actually voted. Oh, I thought I actually changed my vote. So I voted for Dota 2. I don't really play these games personally, but... Dota 2 for me felt like the best game at all of these because Apex Legends, I heard Apex Legends has got worse over the years, so I don't, yeah. Deep Rock, never played in my life. Russ is a, <laughs> the community is a fucking troll, so I'm surprised this got, like, this got voted here, but I don't know what the developers not do. And Dota 2, Dota 2 is a great game. Best game on the Steam, Steam Deck, I actually voted for this. I, it's fucking, who the fuck voted for Diablo 4? I'm sorry, who put Diablo 4 in the top 5? But this is all done by the community, though. they probably be bots that are voting for these games as well, because Diablo 4... <laughs> Diablo 4, guys, we're having a laugh. You know, it's weird as well. Diablo 4 didn't even come to Steam until, like, near the end of 2024. Uh, best game with friends, that makes complete sense. I mean, this game was quite bad. Sons of the Forest isn't all right. It's a good game, but... Lethal Company completely blew up. So that makes sense. Outstanding visual rewards. I could maybe see why it won this, because I think it's the most popular game. Also, I think it obviously looks graphically, it looks the best, if you're judging graphics-wise. But I guess art style, these games look really good as well. Most integrated gameplay. This is what I'm talking about earlier in the video. This is why I think Starfield won. Because I voted for this, because I, I, I've not played any of these games, apart from Starfield. Starfield's the only one I've played. 
Um, Shadows of a Doubt. I, I probably more of an indie game. These two sound like an indie game as well. This that looks like that's in some kind of Russian writing. So that that probably makes sense. That probably the player base is probably more in um, Eastern Europe and that that plays that type of game. So I, I guess that could make sense. Whether them win. Well, well, I wonder how innovative these games are. Revenant 2, Revenant 2 probably shouldn't be in the list either. Um, Revenant 2 was a very controversial game when it came out. The PC port was absolutely fucking dog shit. So I'm kind of glad it didn't win that guy, but still, I probably would have preferred Revenant 2 winning over Starfield. But uh, uh, best game you suck at. <laughs> that, that, this is stupid as well. Overwatch 2. That this has got to be a fucking true. Overwatch 2. But, <laughs> the most probably one of the most negatively viewed games on Steam ever. Um, yeah, Lords of the Fallen. Literally just a shit version of fucking Dark Souls. That, that has a lot of bad balancing problems. Um, FIFA. Uh, I wouldn't really say FIFA. Oh, I actually watched for Street Fighter. I forgot about that. I've watched for these games like two weeks ago. So, <laughs> uh, FIFA. Um, yeah, FC twenty four. I don't know why people voted for that. I mean, why are you getting your ass kicked? Because people are paying, paying paying more fucking money on microtransactions just to beat you up. Wow, I wouldn't really call that a best game, but sure. Um, Street Fighter. <laughs> Street Street Fighter Six. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's kind of funny that the Mortal Kombat game that you can get in this category. I mean, well, well. See, if you that makes sense, how that one. I worked for Street Fighter 6 personally, because I, I didn't play any of these games. But I didn't want to vote for these three, so. Best soundtrack, me personally, I voted for Hi-Fi Rush. I mean, I think Hi-Fi Rush probably should have won it. These three games as well might have been a good category. I'm just a little bit sick that The Last of Us seems to win every single award ever. It's, it's really, really boring. And it's 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 really bad. Um, outstanding story, Rich. I don't know how Jedi Survivor got in here. The uh, Jedi Survivor's story is. I personally think Jedi Survivor's story was actually a bit of a downgrade over Jedi Fallen Order story. Personally, so yeah, I find that a bit weird. Resident Evil Four. I mean, it's a remake of a two thousand and five game. It does add some new stuff, but it's still a remake of a game that came like almost out two decades ago. So. I don't think this should have been in this category. Lies of Pete, uh, I've not played it, so I, I don't really know much about it. And this, maybe some popular game in Japan or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. So, um, Baldur's Gate 3 made win sense to win this um, category as well. Sit back and relax. I voted for this game because train simulator, <laughs> who cares about a train game? A simulator game. Um, Portion Craft, I don't know about these two games, can't comment. If I voted for Dave the Diver, I, if City Stylings wasn't controversial and stayed to like the first game and they weren't saying oh you only need 30 fps in this game this room runs terrible even on the highest end pc this game was a complete disaster the launch so it makes sense this did not win but anyway that is us the, the biggest but it was such a troll because of this this was clearly a troll this i mean i personally think starfield was a troll but i can understand why starfield won this I'm not looking at this at a biased perspective. I think Starfield is a complete fall game. I think Starfield should have not deserved a single reward after that 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 guy came out and complained on Twitter that freaking what's his name? Yeah, I know what the fuck his name is, complaining, saying, Oh, I'm the boss, it's so hard to make games and stuff like that. Then the best of the developers responding to negative comments saying, You can you can shoot, you can fast travel, you can fly. The the astronauts didn't find it boring to land on the moon. Yeah, because it was quite a scary event landing on the moon in 1960. 16, 8, that's why it was, it, it was quite a spurious moon. The, the moon landing might have been a hoax anyway, who, who knows? They might not even be true. <laughs> I'm just saying some serious, serious stuff. And I'm going on for long enough, so I'm going to end it here. Let, let me know, let me know what your thoughts are on the Steam Awards and yeah, <laughs> this is so silly. <laughs> this is so funny. But anyway, I'll see you all next time. Peace out and bye.